All right. Now that we've learned to build some queues, it's time to dive in and build effects here in Onyx. Now effects at their most basic level are something that basically dynamically moves uh, any parameter or multiple parameters of the light. Now that might sound like some technical gibberish, but it's actually pretty simple. Let's go ahead to our fixtures presets window, grab our Artiste Da Vinci's, and we're just gonna go ahead and build a simple intensity effect to show you the basics. So when we want to build an effect, we go from our base parameters to our effects parameters. So I'm on intensity right now, I've got output selected, and we can know that we have output selected because there's a white box around the parameter group, there's a white box around the parameter, and it actually tells us right here at the top. Knowing that I've got a intensity selected, I can now pop over to effects. It's showing me swing on intensity again. That confirms that on intensity bit that I'm working with intensity. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead quick and set this to 200% and start to bring in a speed. Okay. Now, here's what we see going on. I'm actually going to go ahead and let's just pop this cue out of here so that they're white and they're a little easier to see. Okay, so now I see these lights and what they're doing is they're set at 100% in the queue, and then the effect is going ahead, taking them all the way to zero and then technically taking them plus 200%. Um, the way that it, it really works is by the mode. You can see the line here is the base point. That's where the light is set in regular parameters. Now that base point could be stored in the effects queue, but it doesn't have to be, okay? Um, so for example, if I go back to intensity, put it at 50%, set a swing of 100%, now it smoothly goes, it starts at 50%, it goes up to 100%, it goes down to zero, and it continues. Now, you may notice all of our lights are doing the same thing at the same time. This is where effects timing comes in, okay? More often than not, we use wave, and we've got 10 lights here. So if we do a wave of 10, it spreads that effect out so that each light is part is just offset enough so that across the whole 10 lights, it's a, basically a 360 degree spread. So that uh, when, you know, the first light to the last light, it's just smooth across them. Okay, uh, different wave values are going to give us different looks and we'll explore that in our next quick tutorial. But first, let's just go ahead and record this. So press record, we're gonna put it in a queue and I'm gonna call it intensity effect or just int effects. And I'm gonna store it as an override type fader. Now I know we haven't covered these here and we'll cover them in other videos and, and other places, but an override is a unique type of cue list because everything fades in as you bring the fader up and down and it works really great for effects, okay? So if I now clear twice and I bring up this fader, I see my effect. The cool thing about overrides is I can bring it in halfway and now the effect is going, it's at half the speed and half the size because we have speed and size stored to this fader. Uh, pretty cool. So we'll leave that down at zero for now and build another effect. Let's grab the Artiste Da Vinci's again. This time I want to go to color. We've got cyan selected. Actually, let's do magenta and go to effects. I'll go ahead and just hit swing to maximum, dial in a speed. This time we'll go to a different mode. So we'll go to kind of a chasing mode. And now this is a good time to look at wave versus step. So as I mentioned, if we do a wave of 10, we spread that effect across all 10 units, which in this case, uh, because it's chasing, because there's not a fade to it, it's just a hard edge, as we saw in the mode diagram right here. Because it's a hard edge, it, it just, you know, there's a break in five fixtures in, right? If instead we turn off wave and turn on step, what we get is it says there's 10 steps to this effect now. Okay, so there's 10 steps, one happens at a time. Okay, um, and so then uh, that's basically what goes on there. Okay, if we set a step of five, for example, then two out of 10 run the effect at a time. If we set it to two, 
every other fixture runs it at a time. Wave is similar, but again, it's instead of making steps, instead of making it two step, three step, 10 steps, um, it's splitting the total down. So like I said, 10 spreads it across all the lights. Five gives you across 10 lights, the effect running twice or every five units in the order that they were selected, which with these groups uh, is numerical order in terms of the fixture numbers. Okay, um, so let's just go ahead and do an every two. That's cool. I might speed it up a little. Record it, call it color effects. Um, and overwrite fader, that type of, of playback is already selected because it's the last type we recorded. So I could just hit enter and it chooses that type. Press clear twice. And now let's combine them together. The cool thing about overrides is when you have different types of effects or other parameters on them and they're not overlapping, you can combine them to make really cool things. So I can bring up my intensity effect. I can bring up my color effect. I'm just going to pull this guy up here. But then I can do any combination of the two. So I can, you know, bring one of them down, bring the other one down, get a lot of different combinations out of it. It gets even more powerful when we add more parameters. Let's do a, a movement effect with pan tilt. Now these work a little bit differently. And uh, in the last update 4.6, actually before 4.8, they, they did change uh, one of the settings and I wanna run through that here. So if I grab my lights and I go to pan tilt and I go to effects, we're going to notice that it looks a little bit different because we have swing pan and swing tilt, speed and figure. Okay, if we were at like intensity or any of the other parameters, we get swing just on that parameter speed mode and multiplier. And so it's a little bit different what we're seeing, but not crazily different. Okay, so let's just go ahead, bring up some pan, bring up maybe 25% pan, 50% tilt, bring in some speed. Now what we see is we see those lights moving around. We see them following this figure, the way that pan and tilt relate to each other. And I'm gonna choose this uh, oblong circle and we see the, the pan and tilt all working together. Okay, uh, if we set an effects timing, uh, a wave, I like to do an odd number, uh, something that doesn't go evenly into the total. So like we've got 10 here, so I like to choose like seven. And that gives you a nice random looking effect because it doesn't work out mathematically. You can't divide 10 by seven and get any whole number. Okay, um, so that makes it look really cool. All right. Um, with the effects, with the pan tilt effects, um, you can unlink them if you want to work with just pan or just tilt because sometimes that's what you want to do. Now, it used to be up here behind this cog, there was a little spot that said pan tilt combo, uh, but they moved it. It's actually here in effects as effects mode. So you can turn off pan tilt combo with that. And then I'm working just with pan or just with tilt, okay? Now, for most situations, I do like the pan tilt combo, but it is nice by moving it to a parameter here. <clears throat> it is uh, a little bit more flexible into how you record things because you could literally in the same queue have some lights uh, running, <clears throat> running with combo, some without. It just gives you a couple more options, okay? So let's go ahead and record this. Place it on fader. I'll call it PT effects. PTFX, ta-ta for now. That's what Tigger says, right? Um, not really. Uh, we'll clear that. And uh, then we can mix all of our effects together, okay? Now effects, I used override faders here, but they can be recorded into regular cues as well. Just to give you an example, just uh, so we'll play back some of our different effects here. Apologize if you hear my family heading out the door. Um, so we've got, we've got all of our effects running and say this was in a queue list and we wanted to stop effects for our next queue list. We would simply select our fixtures and then in order to stop an effect, what you want to do is stop the swing. That's going to be the most effective way to do it because when we do that, they go back to their base position and they're happy. Okay. If I clear that and I stop the speed you can see that stopping the speed kind of stops them all where they are in the effect, um, which typically doesn't 
look amazingly good. <laughs> so stopping the swing is going to be your best bet there. Okay. You can do it individually or on the effects program window here, uh, there are these macros. So to turn off the different types of effects, you can see we've turned them all off here. And you would need to do that because of tracking. If you're in a long queue list, you would need to do that on your queue after the effects in order to stop those effects. Okay, so that's super key. We're going to clear that out, turn off a link, um, because I want to show you one more thing. Okay, so if we bring our faders down, you now see we're in the effects program window and we have all these macros. So these are pre-built effects that you can use. You can also build your own effects and store them here. What makes them unique if we select our group and select an effect here is uh, do green. I don't like green, yellow, magenta, white. No, dark blue, magenta. I can't decide. doesn't matter. Um, so what we get here is effects link gets turned on. Now, effects link allows you to use multiple parameters together, in this case, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And when you apply things like effects timing to them, it applies to all three parameters so that the effect stays in sync. If I'd selected this wave of 10 and I was only on cyan or only on magenta or only on yellow, then one of those parameters would be doing a wave of 10. The rest of them would not, and it would look really chaotic. Sometimes that's the look you go for, but more often than not, you don't. Okay, so that's what effects link does. That's a uh, very key and it gets turned on when you use a lot of these macros because they have multiple parameters in them, but you can also turn them on yourself. Now this, this isn't a tutorial on effects link. We've got other ones out there, um, but helpful to know. So the effects macros apply to one fixture, then you've just got to apply timing and then you can store those in cues just like any other effect. All right. Now, this is the end of kind of the basic, like super basic level stuff, but I do want to teach you how to use the Dialos Pixel Mapper, which is a really integral part of Onyx in our next video. So make sure you're subscribed here. Check out our next video below where we're going to show you the basics of getting started with the Dialos Pixel Mapper, which is a feature built into Onyx and is pretty stinking awesome. We'll see you guys there. Thanks.